In The Lancet, which is one of the two top British medical journals, in January of 2018, there was the publication of the Orbita study. It's basically looking at uh, percutaneous uh, coronary intervention, in other words, a stent <clears throat> with stable angina and whether or not it uh, prevents um, coronary events, whether or not it helps with um, angina and cor coronary blood flow. It didn't. Um, you hear a lot of buzz about that in the uh, cardiology community. <clears throat> It's like, we've been doing so many of these for so long, we thought it helped. Well, <clears throat> I really am skeptical, though, that things are going to change, and here's why. It, this is not the first study to show that. There have been studies around for years that have. Uh, so we'll go over that for a few minutes, uh, talk a little bit about the study. Um, but first, a brief introduction. My name is Ford Brewer, um, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. This channel is all about how to, uh, to help you take control of your uh, chronic disease and uh, avoid, prevent uh, death, de death, disability um, for the next 20 years of your life, whether you're uh, 50, 60, 70, or 80. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you may not, and, and I'll just warn you, you may not want to watch the rest of the, the video because, uh, again, I think it's it's been pretty clear for a while. This, I'm just going to cover Orbita today to give you some perspective around whether or not stents um, prevent heart attack or cure coronary uh, artery disease. Again, they don't. And this, is, this will be the first in a mini-series, probably three, maybe four um, videos. I'm going to cover other studies which have shown similar things. The COURAGE trial and the a VERT trial. So on the orbit of trial, this was done in England, again just published in Lancet. Um, <clears throat> what was interesting and unique about this study was that they did sham procedures, placebo procedures. In other words, they took, uh, I, I'll, let's go through the details. It's a blinded, multi-center, um, randomized, trial of PCI, in other words, percutaneous intervention, um, in other words, stents, versus placebo. So they had to take the patient through the same process in terms of workup. And then uh, I believe they even put the, all the patients to sleep so the patient would know. Here's what the patients had. First, they received six weeks of uh, medication therapy. Um, these these patients, by the way, had severe disease. They had over 70% single vessel uh, occlusion. Um, <clears throat> Pre-randomization assessments with cardiopulmonary exercise, symptom questionnaire, and they had a, basically a stress um, echo uh, to look at function of the heart associated with this lack of blood flow to the heart tissue. Patients were randomized one-to-one -to, -one to undergo placebo. Um, <clears throat> the primary, after six weeks of uh, follow-up, assessments were done and they were randomized. And then again, one would get a full-blown stent, the other would not. Um, there was no difference in the, there, there was good randomization. They checked that to make sure that uh, the randomization prod product actually, or process actually worked. Here's some of the numbers. 230 patients were enrolled. Of those uh, 200, was it, two, yeah, exactly 200 uh, underwent randomization. The enrollment period was January 6, 2014 through August 11, uh, 2017. 105 patients were assigned uh, the stent, and 95 were assigned to the placebo. Um, again, mean area of stenosis was 84%. So again, these people had severe blockage of their coronary arteries. Um, <clears throat> after um, <clears throat> after pre uh, completing this activity, 
there was no significant difference in the primary endpoint of exercise time. What that means is they completed these, they did rehab, and then um, at the end of this, they put these patients on the treadmill to see how far they could exercise without getting symptoms. The people that did not get the stents went just as far as the, those that did get the stents. PCI in a, uh, did not increase exercise time. In other words, stents did not improve their coronary situation. So <clears throat> that's interesting. Uh, it made me start asking the question, well, how many people have had stents? If you go to angioplasty.org, you see some very interesting conversation around this. They're talking about breaking records for people that get stents. Um, Scott R. in Oregon, I'm afraid your record has been surpassed. There was just an article yesterday about Dr. Samuel DeMaio of Star State um, Heart in El Paso, Texas, implanted 32 stents within a 13-month period in an 80-year-old. So it's like <clears throat> there's just a bunch of conversation about this. Now, <clears throat> Again, I think there needs to be a lot more conversation within the cardiology community about whether or not these stents are doing anything worthwhile. Thank you for your interest.